this edition of Killing with Cubase, we're going to talk about advanced midity. <laughs> midity. <laughs> what is midity? Advanced midity. Okay, we've covered the MIDI basics. Now let's start talking about uh, the more advanced MIDI stuff. Now, Cubase, Cubase has been known a long time in special electronic circles for being pretty hardcore. Um, its, it's sequencer was, was way, way, way ahead of everything as far as I know. And everybody's kind of played catch up and you know, Logic's had a good sequencer for a while. Digital Performers had a good one for a while. Pro Tools got one like in 2010 or something. So. Um, before then, a lot of a lot of things were way behind, uh, so, but they're all playing catch up. So anyway, Cubase has a very very um, established, mature sequencer, I guess we can call it. Now, what's what am I talking about? Well, for one, basic stuff. Um, you can see this is like our drums. Um, let's sell this. Yeah, to do that right. Hang on. Okay, I got to solo that track. Well, did I tear something up? It looks like I did. Oh, why did it do that? Hang on. I got it weird from last time. Okay. Okay, so there's our drums. And we're going to mess this up. First thing is, let's get... I'm going to use the drum editor with my little magic shortcut that I've made that I'm not telling you about. Um, now, because this is electronic stuff, rigid, boring kick drums and the same sounds are, are kind of... You can get away with that much more than you could if you were programming... Um, uh, more natural type music but first first things first we can highlight all these gadgets and uh, this is a custom shortcut I made I hit control one and then I can adjust velocity on all of them all at once so if I want to turn these kick drums all the way up to hit harder let's let me show you that's what we got right now it's hitting bad but and you hear that kick kind of distort a little bit there no telling what's going on I'm probably distorting it I do a lot of little trickeries, which we'll learn. We'll get to my mixing video someday. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so if I just want to, uh, and it's like, say the hi hat was just too um, not loud, but like too much attack. In other words, like somebody's just beating on it too much, and if it sounded like it had too much, I don't know how to. It's hard to describe because we can adjust volume to everything. The, the tonality of a high velocity is a nice bad. Anyway, we can pull that down because this this is a add subtract thing. Or it can also compress um, or expand or limit. So, um, and this is the MIDI data we're talking about here again. So, but it works the same way as a compressor. But if I want to pull it down, I say negative 30, and they pull it at negative 30. Now, and it can, so that makes our uh, hi hats a lot softer than this. Now, it's complicated because I've got a bunch of other stuff, I'm polyrhythm stuff I'm, go, I'm doing there too to pump it up. But, you can find this under MIDI, and MIDI is one area where I do find myself uh, using the this menu thing quite often. And, uh, well, I just got to show you, I guess. Okay, and so we go to MIDI functions. This is where a lot of good good toys are. Um, Legato is a good one. Um, and Legato is used, just kind of as its name implies. Let's find a synth track I can tear up. The Prophet's probably a fun one. Ah, so you gotta be careful. Hit the wrong button on Cubase, it will kill you. Okay, now this is routed to my profit, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and loop this little section for now so I can play. Make sure that's coming out. Okay, that is, that's going through my console. That's the analog synth there. Okay, so double click on it. Let's see what we have. Now, notice they're all connected. Every note, let's zoom in. Actually, there's some overlap there. Tell you what, let's assume we play this really screwy, maybe with two fingers or something like that. And maybe this overlap depends on the sound, maybe monophonic, we'll see. But all right, that actually sounded fine, but let's just assume that it didn't. Um, I know I have sounds in, in the profit that, that do sound bad if you have overlap. Um, so just kind of ignore what, I, what I'm doing on this, on this, ignore the sound, I should say. My brain's kind of getting scattered here. It's not early in the morning. I have to blame it on something else. Late in the afternoon, I guess. Okay, now we can do what's called restrict polyphony, which sounds really complicated. All that means is how many notes can we hit at once? Well, I have two overlapping notes, and I don't like it. 
Same thing over here. Or I should say two notes that are playing at the same time. I don't want this thing to ever play more than one at the same time. Well, that's easy. That means one. So it now chopped it off so that we exactly... That's as far down as we can go, which is pretty crazy in Cubase. So you can see it's perfect. And that means that there won't be any weird switches. And especially with certain monophonic synths like my Moog, if you hit a second note when you're not done with the first one, it may just ignore that second note entirely. It's almost an art learning how to play on them a little bit. So, so that can make a perfect switch. Now let's say that we've got a very like legato style choppy performance, um, which we don't want. Okay, that's a pretty extreme uh, example of that. So what we can do is MIDI functions legato. And then now we have one smooth track. And that's probably what I used on this track before you even saw it. Okay, you get the idea. It's real flowing and smooth. Um, and it's it's a note that all these functions can be set to um, custom uh, shortcuts. And I, I wish I had more buttons or something because there's so many good functions in Cubase that I like to have. But uh, don't be shy about overwriting something you don't ever use. Like I don't really use their little fancy marker system. And so control one's there and control two is legato. So I can kind of show you like how it would work with control two. Oops. If I just hit control two, automatic. And so again, the guys that say you have to always access the menus, they're full of crap. That's not right. You don't have to access them hardly at all. Am I making that little sound again? Man, I hate that habit. I have to break that somehow. Oh, well, too bad. You're getting your money's worth. Okay, um, and there's all kinds of uh, fancy stuff that you should look into and see like the velocity. That's what I hit with a control one, or if I want to turn them all down tremendously, or a lot, or compress them, or or whatever I can. So that's a good one. I'm not here to kind of teach how all these things work because I don't even know how all of them work. I forget, but um, the point here is that there's a lot of cool stuff that you should definitely look into um, on this functions thing, and these are very very handy. Now, the thing I will show you is a logical editor. And this little guy is brilliant. Uh, maybe a little bit too brilliant. Because uh, he, he can be complex. I'm going to get a drink of water here. Um, and it's, it's basically a if this kind of thing. And again, this kind of applies to more computer nerd stuff. But um, it's like delete each fifth note. I don't know if they're talking about fifth as in the harmony or fifth is just, let's just see if it deletes the fifth note. All right, and so we have it already highlighted. You gotta make sure you have it all highlighted. And then apply over here. Yeah, now why the hell would you need that? I have no idea, but you can. And probably it looks like it's some kind of computer language, which I don't want to intimidate any of you guys, but let's change this to a two. It should de delete every second one, I think. And it did. Now that could be useful if you had a double timed hi hat and you hated it. You could highlight the whole song and officially half time the hi hat. Pretty wicked stuff. And see that that's a kind of a one example of what we're dealing with here. Uh, see, I don't even know what they're talking about on some of this stuff. Um, you'd have to um, even to select all events beyond the cursor. Uh, if you push that button, especially if you had it on on a uh, uh, shortcut, meaning anything after the, the cursor, we select and then go, D -d 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 -d. it would make process, instead of having to go B -b 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 and highlight everything, it could be pretty cool stuff. So a lot of this is really advanced and crazy, but it's worth exploring because, uh, well, here, here's a good one, uh, transfer all notes or, uh, I, mean, I, I've used this a lot when I program actually, where I can shift, um, uh, by a random number, uh, like ver like basically randomly ver vary each uh, hit, so it's a little bit less than perfect and it gets it a little bit more human. Uh, let's look at the standard stuff a little more. Okay, anything you to delete? That's a simple one. Double the tempo. That's an easy one. Half the tempo. Push back forward ticks, which uh, should slow it down. Uh, make it pull. Push forward, so it's pushing ahead. Um, uh, random velocity. That's another one I use when I'm programming. I like to start with some random stuff because it, it speeds up the process for me of getting it more human, even though I hate doing that. I'd rather just use e-drums or whatever. Um, this is another one where I get a lot of uh, random hits uh, from the e-drums, like noises uh, called double triggering. 
a lot of them are just kind of like like, like tiny little hits that uh, because the drums hit once, or maybe if you hit a kick drum, the snare just rings just a little bit um, as a false trigger. Well, using this, we can filter that junk out, and that's pretty handy for that stuff too. Uh, transpose and an octave or down an octave, you know, that, that kind of stuff is really cool. So definitely check out the logical editor because you can, uh, things that often take you um, hours or minutes or, or whatever, you know, take more time. If, you, if you're familiar with this thing, they can be awesome. And I don't use the thing that often anymore. And I'm handy enough nowadays or most of the time I can get by without it. But um, if I'm doing anything crazy or advanced, or especially trying to get like realistic performances, that thing can be awesome. So definitely check that out. Let's see, and again, I'm not that advanced with this MIDI stuff. I'm trying to make songs, and so I'm not trying to be a Cubase expert about all things. I just, I, what, what I basically do is if I find something's taking me two hours to do, I'll hop on Google and try to figure out a way that I can do it in two minutes or two seconds. And there often is a solution. So that's kind of my approach I recommend for you guys. If you feel like you're wasting a lot of time with something, you probably are. Okay, um, if you guys, uh, again, have any questions or anything I missed, uh, feel free to email me. Uh, PM me or just post on the forum at Recording Review. All right, thanks, guys.